we will proceed to some other global prism parameter options first is smoothing option this creates prism layers from good quality tetra mesh it is used to improve the prism and tetra volume mesh quality by smoothing generally default options are sufficient in most of the cases when we are using this particular smoothing option next is number of surface smoothing steps if user does not wish to to smooth mesh after creating prism layers then this number is set to 0 Generally it is done while extruding only one one layer of prism. Next option that we have is triangle quality type. This specifies various quality criteria for improving the triangular surface mesh. Laplace smoothing is typically best for final prism quality. There are other criteria or other parameters like number of volume smoothing steps which specifies how many times volume mesh is to be smoothed before creating prism. this smooths the face normal vectors producing smooth prism surfaces so these are some additional global prism parameters we will not go much into detail of this now we will see how to set different prism parameters different options where prism parameters can be specified first is part mesh setup then we have the local surface mesh setup and then we have the compute prism mesh tab so in order to go to all these what we have to do is we have to go to mesh tab then we need to enter into surface mesh tab and go into the individual part meshing parameters for computing mesh we have to go to mesh then go to compute mesh and then prism mesh and then we have to select part for creating prism layers local curve mesh setup is also there where uh, when we go to mesh then we go to curve mesh setup and then we go to curve mesh parameters we will discuss all these parameters in the slides to come but what we have to remember is generally part mesh setup is sufficient to specify prism parameters surface and curve mesh parameters are rarely used now we'll discuss the part mesh setup these are the individual part mesh setups that are applicable for creating prism layers we have to go into part mesh then surface mesh setup and then we go into the part mesh setup and for each part we give uh, whether we have to create prism and what are the different prism parameters like maximum size and height and height ratio number of layers etc these apply to all individual parts that we have used uh, or that we have selected so first what we have to do is tick a check box for creating prism for that particular part then we give the height the height ratio and then the number of layers So this is where we enter the individual prism layer setup for individual parts. So we have the part name, then we have the selection or a checkbox, then we have the height of the prism, then the height ratio of the prism layers and then the number of prism layers. We have to toggle on the checkbox where prism layers are to be created. That is for this base prism layers will not be created but for body, geometry and nose we have checked this particular box so prism layers will be created for these parts. Now we will discuss effect of selecting volume and surface part on growth of prism layers. Uh, we will use a test geometry for this particular uh, example. It has two volume parts and three external surface part and one internal surface. So this is the part name. There is surface is part zero one. The bottom surface is part zero two. This is the common surface named as common. This is the volume one. volume 01 and second volume is named as volume 02 this is the geometry that we meshed and now we are seeing a cut plane through the volume volume mesh 01 and volume mesh 02 and we have different colors for indicating tetrahedral mesh in different volumes now what we will do next is only for the part 01 we create prisms but we will not select any volume part for prism creation now if we do not select any volume part for prism creation it means that all volume parts are selected now we will observe that prism layer is created for part 01 and prism layer passes through both the geometry parts since we have not selected any volume the prism layer passes through both the geometry parts so you can see this prism layer passing through both these geometry now in the second case what we do is for part 01 and for common for these two surfaces we select them for prism creation within the part mesh setup no volume is uh, selected for prism creation what we can observe is prism layer is created on part 01 and common and prism layer passes through both volume parts common part has two prism layers as both the volumes are selected there is this particular common surface or common part has two prism layers here and here as both the parts were selected for creating prism 
in the next case what we do is we select the part 0 1 and the common part or the common surface for prism creation also only volume 0 1 is selected for prism creation so what it does is that prism layers will be created in only selected volume that is volume 1 and there is no prism layer in volume 0 2 as we did not select volume 0 2 in next case what we do is we select part 0 1 and part 0 2 for prism creation and no volume part is selected what we observe is prism layer is created on both surfaces that is part 0 1 and part 0 2 no volume part is selected which is same as selecting all volume part for prism creation and therefore we have a through a through and through prism layers for both the volumes in next case what we do is all surface note that we have selected all surface parts that is common part 0 1 and, and part 0 2 for prism creation and we do not select any volume prism layer is created on all the selected surface and grows on all the volumes and we can see prism layers around the common around part 0 1 and around part 0 2 also and since we have not selected any volume which means all the volumes are selected and prism layer passes through all volumes now in the next case what we do is we select all surfaces that is common part 0 1 and part 0 2 all these three surfaces and we select volume 1 which means that the prism layer will be created only in volume 1 which is shown here there is no prism layer in volume 2 in the next case we do the exactly opposite thing that is we select all the three parts that is common uh, surface parts that is common part 1 and part 2 and we select only volume 0 2 and hence the prism layer is created only in volume 0 2 there is no prism layer within volume 0 1 now in this case what we do is we select all parts for growing prism we select part 0 1 we select part 0 2 we select the common part as well as we select all the volumes that is volume 0 1 and volume 0 2 both are selected and we see that prism layers are created in both the volumes along all the surfaces so this is a proof that selecting no part is same as selecting all volume part and in both cases mesh is created through and through in both the volume or uh, in all the volume so in this way we can select different options within the individual part mesh setup for creating prism layers for individual parts it is just important to note that in order to restrict the prism mesh for individual volumes we actually have to check these volumes if we do not check volumes then prism layer will be created in all the volumes